Right now, the internet is rampant with comparison videos between AMD's FidelityFX Super Resolution, or FSR 1.0, and NVIDIA's DLSS 2.2. These are all very valid and worthwhile exercises, but while we have previously discussed the fundamentals of using neural networks to predict target pixel values, we haven't spoken about FSR 1.0 to any great extent. How does this new open source technology compare with its peer technologies? Which image source features does it utilize? And what does this mean for the future of DirectX, DirectML, and Vulkan APIs? Let's look for some answers. First, please indulge me a moment to air a minor complaint. It's the use of the term image reconstruction. Now, to my mind, the techniques we consider today would be more appropriately described as image construction. You are attempting to construct an image with a goal in mind, but not trying to reconstruct a previous image. Again, it's a minor point, and I'll continue to use the common term for the remainder of this video. Thank you. I feel cleansed. In an earlier video, we talked about upscaling and image reconstruction in general, so we will examine that problem space with a little less depth than we normally would. The takeaway is that to get an image up on the screen, your software must decide how to fill up all the pixels required for the higher resolution image. Each pixel to be filled in that image requires a certain amount of time to decide on how it should look. The more accurate your calculation, or the worse your code, the more time it takes to cumulatively fill the entire image. As a corollary, the smaller your image, the less time it takes to calculate, and the more images you can calculate per second. Therefore, as everyone knows, lower resolutions generally improve frame rate. Now, what if we wanted to have both pixels filling every available spot on our screen and a quick frame rate? The solution is to render a smaller image of expensive to calculate pixels and upscale that resultant image to a larger one while filling in the missing pixels with less expensive to calculate ones. There is a long and storied history littered with techniques for doing so. Many early ones involved rendering to texture and repurposing hardware accelerated sampling techniques to fill up the screen. This gave rise to bilinear sampling upscaling, which interpolated the source image across texel values, resulting in a very blurry destination image but it was extremely fast and gave every screen pixel something worthwhile to do. Similarly, they could use the nearest neighbor texel sampling. This would clamp the source texture coordinates to their nearest neighbor without interpolation, giving you the most aliased image possible. When I used to see the early Sega racing games in the arcade like OutRun or Power Drift, I naively called it the exploding pixel method but the concept is still the same and demonstrates the result in image nicely. In present times, we see temporal reconstruction that takes features from previously rendered images to predict what value a missing pixel should have in the current frame. The features taken from the previous frames and the algorithm to predict them have iteratively improved over the years to the point where prediction in many cases is very efficient and very serviceable. Even more impressively, NVIDIA's proprietary DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling, has an even more diverse set of discriminating features, working alongside a trained neural network to provide an exceedingly impressive pixel prediction accuracy rate. But again, it's proprietary, requires model training, and is much more work to integrate into a solution. We did create a very high-level description of features and generative networks in a previous Tech Deep Dive. If you'd like to learn more about them, click the box in the upper right, and I will include a link to it in this video's description. Not to be outdone, AMD has created Fidelity Super Resolution, or FSR 1.0. And yes, AMD wants it to be referred to as FSR 1.0, presumably to quite fairly drive home the point that the technology is in its infancy. As with the rest of their Fidelity FX suite of technologies, including the much admired contrast adaptive sharpening, AMD has made FSR 1.0 open source. This means its source code is publicly viewable and open to adaptation and contribution. It's licensed under the very promiscuous MIT license, making it available royalty free for use in practically all commercial and non profit projects. One major point to AMD. 
samples and headers for both Vulkan and DirectX APIs are included alongside the source code and based on a read-through provide really relevant jumping off points for your own exploration and integrations. Based on several developer comments, integration is quick, taking only about an hour or so, and that seems pretty much what you would expect. This compares favorably to anecdotal estimates which suggest DLSS takes several days to integrate and train the model. But integration is typically a one-time cost, and once in place, maintenance should be similar. So that's not a significant differentiator in my opinion. Now back to the tech. As with all of our other contenders, FSR 1.0 is intended to be executed on a lower resolution image after anti-aliasing but before typical post-processing, such as light bloom and film grain. The process has two passes. The first is called Edge Adaptive Spatial Upsampling and is inspired by a Lanxos upscaler. A full explanation of the math behind this is beyond the scope of this video, but the concept itself is very clever. By examining the gradients of a series of kernels or sample sets of input pixels surrounding the location of the undefined pixel and examining how they differ, the algorithm can provide a weighted prediction of the edginess of the pixel and what that pixel should look like. In terms of what we discussed in previous videos, these gradients become engineered features based on the input pixels. The second pass is called Robust Contrast Adaptive Sharpening. This pass helps to coerce out detail from this upscaled image. I haven't dug into the source code at any length to see what makes this robust compared to their regular contrast adaptive sharpening. It sounds like a subtle dig, actually. This clever combination pretty reliably predicts edge detail, can run on nearly any GPU, and provides a significant increase in performance, especially on low-end hardware. The problem is that being focused on edge detection and prediction, inner texture quality cannot be reliably predicted. Where temporal upscaling may have seen the inner detail in a previous frame and predict its existence in this frame, DLSS has been trained against the texture and rendered image data so it can predict, based on that model, what inner detail might be there. But FSR can only use the surrounding data of a lower resolution current image that may have never even heard of that inner detail. It's a shortcoming for sure, but in some usages, such as an edge-heavy scene, you might not even really see a difference. As it's already usable in DirectX 12 and Vulkan, expect it to show up as an option in more and more titles going forward. I can see it hitting Xbox systems, PC titles, and even the new Steam Deck very quickly. I say very quickly, but I mean, come on, I got my order in one minute after orders opened and it's still not coming until first quarter 2022. I mean, come on, Valve. Uh, a side note, people have been asking about DirectML. Based on the news I've seen, it appears that Microsoft is really still kind of unsure how they want to position it. Previously, a supporting tech of DirectX mainly, I hope it will become more of a general purpose framework like OpenCL, and based on their hiring lately, it seems like they're moving in that direction. Stay tuned. So while Fidelity Super Resolution 1.0 may not be the panacea and DLSS killer everyone was hoping for, it's still early days and the tech will undoubtedly become more and more powerful over time. But even today, FSR already has so much to recommend it. It's fast, free, runs on nearly all modern GPUs, is easy to integrate, and in cases can provide a solid performance boost with a minimal loss. It's an exciting time to be alive. But for now, that's our high-end and somewhat hand-wavy explanation of Fidelity FX Super Resolution 1.0. Are you excited about it? What are your experiences with it? What do you see as the technology's advantages and shortcomings? Please leave a comment below and let us know. Also, feel free to add any questions or suggestions. And if you enjoyed this video and would be interested in seeing more, please consider liking it, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell. It would be greatly appreciated and really helps out a lot. Thanks for watching.